You can follow him on Twitter at Mariotti Sports. He's a longtime sports columnist and host of the Unmuted Podcast. Jay Mariotti, welcome to The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple. It's a pleasure, guys, and I hope you're staying safe. Yes, we are. How, how's Jay? your – you safe, your family? Yeah, everybody's good, and uh, I live in Los Angeles. I know that uh, one of you is in L.A., one of you is in New York, right? Yes, I'm yes. in Jersey, yes. Uh, hey, we're, hey. we're all in living hell right now, so, right. so be safe. No doubt about it, and Jay, it's good to hear your voice. And we go back a long time when I used to appear on your show and fill in for you once in a blue moon, but I appreciate you, and it's great to hear you. Well, we have much to talk about. I mean, Michael yes. Jordan appears to be trying to save us all from boredom and ESPN from oblivion. <laughs> and looking at the ratings, it seems as if uh, they've done a good job at the first two shows. I, I heard you uh, you lead in with me here. Look, bone to pick with Michael. I think the bone I have to pick, and if you guys know me, you know what I stood for in Chicago. It's Reinsdorf and Krauss. Uh, these are the two villains, and it's not just Kraus. Today, all I've heard is Jerry Kraus. Look, there was a man who owned this team, and his name was Jerry Reinsdorf. He could have put it easily put an end to this infighting and bickering and backstabbing and the, the mocking of, of Kraus by Michael and Scotty. And, uh, but Reinsdorf just sort of sat in the background, and, and that's what I'm, I've been talking to people about today is, what, why is Jerry Reinsdorf getting off here? Guys, I can think about so many owners in sports history who sit back and enjoy the prosperity of something this special. I think of Jerry Buss in L.A. when he had Magic and, and Kareem in, in Showtime. Jerry Buss would never even dream of getting in the way and sabotaging uh, a, a, an era, a dynasty. And yet, what you saw last night, so very true. I think they did a great job of uh, showing the golf the very poisonous gulf between Scotty, Phil, and Michael, and the Jerry's. And I hope they continue to show it because it's, it's absolutely disgusting that this thing had to end as it did. And even today, guys, I'm, I'm looking at the news, and, and there's a story that, that Tim Floyd goes on a, new, a station in New Orleans today and says that they were starting to recruit him as early as uh, 1988, and that during wow. the finals in Seattle in 96, they, uh, Floyd and Reinsdorf are walking through the streets of Seattle and they're ready to fire Phil during the NBA finals? Wow. I mean, th this is absolutely ludicrous what's going on. And I'm glad that America is finally starting to, to see what happened. Jay, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and you use the right term, too, disgusting, because watching it, I was just like, to, that's the unpardonable sports sin, to break up a dynasty on your own as the front office. Let them get old and retire or get beaten on the court. But the way they did it was ridiculous. Was it simply or mainly Krause's insecurities with, like you said, Michael and Scotty teasing him, Phil and the players getting all the credit, or was it something deeper? They were a tag team, the Cherries, and the biggest problem here, and I'm not so sure if the documentary went deep enough, they did with Pippen, but not so much with Michael. Where were the payments here? Why weren't these guys being paid what they deserve to be paid? Michael Jordan, in one of the, the biggest robberies in the history of sports, eight years, $24 million, and never once did Reinsdorf go to him and say, let's redo this. The Lakers re were redoing Magic's deal at that time. The Knicks redid Ewing's deal. The Celtics redid Bird's at some point in that period. Nope, not Michael Jordan. You saw Scottie Pippen, the 100 and, what, uh, 20 22nd second. highest yep. paid player in the league at some point. Ludicrous that Reinsdorf would actually go on this program and say, hey, I tried to talk him out of it. Well, then why are you offering the deal to begin with? This is the side of the Bulls that I'm glad is coming out. I guarantee you Reinsdorf, who's a control freak, is freaked out right now that Michael has complete control over this narrative. Jordan played this very smart, guys. He waited a long time, and then once ESPN went to him and said, when can we release this footage, Jordan said, I have to control it. I'm the executive producer. 
my two people are going to be executive producers and nothing is getting by me. So therefore, he is allowed to tell this story the way he wants to. And Reinsdorf got suckered into it. It's classic to watch as somebody who was in the middle of this. I never thought we'd get around to this. And what you mentioned earlier, my, my column last week, I think Michael has some fessing up to here, to here. I, I tried in Chicago, my eight years of covering this story, to try to stay down the middle. A lot of media people were Jordan people. A lot of media people were Reinsdorf Kraus people, such as Sam Smith. I'm the one trying to be neutral in the middle here. It was pretty difficult when you saw the mistreatment of, of Jordan and Scotty and Phil throughout this thing. Uh, but what Michael Jordan needs to do at some point in this is address the gambling, address uh, his feelings of what happened to his father in the murder. Some people to this day believe it's connected to his gambling. Did the NBA poo-poo and overlook this investigation? Did David Stern truly, the late David Stern, investigate the gambling the way he should have? These are questions I have to this day. Let's see if Jason Error, the director who is doing a good job so far and claims that he asked Michael these questions. Let's see if he asks those questions, asks the follow-ups, and then asks other people about this. Because to me, you don't let that story go when Pete Rose will be forever known as, as the, the you know this gambler, the gambling fan, right. Lance Armstrong, even Bill Belichick, Tom Brady. Let, let's go right down through it. The Astros, the Red Sox. I don't know how you let Jordan off the hook with this, and let's see where this uh, documentary goes. It'll be interesting to see because uh, I doubt they get into many of right. those things, but there are stuff that you, I, I'm with you that I would love to know. Was he involved in Isaiah being kept off the Olympic team? You know, that's another story that's out there. Uh, Jay, you know, will, will, will they address that? The All-Star game where, where it's always talked about or people said that he was frozen out and that was one of the reasons him and Isaiah had the big falling out and he took it, all, took it out on Isaiah. That's something I want to know about. I felt that way that as we go forward, there's plenty of stories that probably won't get uh, covered. And the other part, Jay, I want to ask you is, do you think there's a chance that he'll wind up with more fans after this? Millennials look on YouTube and watch games but this will give you a little bit more insight and depth into who Michael Jordan was, what made him so great, and maybe millennials who just really have never seen the guy or don't really know the guy will have an appreciation for him. You think that's possible? Yeah, that's right, Rob. I, I think so. Michael went into seclusion. He runs this nondescript franchise in Charlotte. I, think about this. All of these people who gathered for the greatest dynasty in basketball history, what the hell happened to all of them? The Bulls have sunk into oblivion, and Michael has done nothing since. How does the greatest competitor we've ever seen deal with this mediocrity or losing in Charlotte, North Carolina? That, that's one question I've always had, uh, and it's a shame that they all sort of, Scotty Pippen sort of shows up on ESPN every now and then. He got fired by the Bulls as an ambassador earlier this year. Uh, Steve Kerr ends up, along with Phil, having the most success of all of them uh, at, at this point, but uh, you know, Rob, I, I think that we're going to probably, and it's unfair for me because I, I've seen a lot of these uh, the, the, the episodes in the series so far. I haven't seen the last two. Maybe they will answer all of our questions at that point. But I, I, I do have the same questions you have about all of the above, and I, I'm curious uh, if this is the definitive documentary on Michael Jordan are we going to get around to all of it? Uh, it's rare when any sort of subject gets, what, 500 minutes? Uh, you know, it's basically 500 minutes of time, right, uh, when you, when you yep. subtract 10 minutes an episode. Yep. And, and, you know, okay, this, is this going to be an Oscar-winning uh, documentary series like O.J. Simpson? Well, O.J. You know, didn't control the uh, narrative. Michael Jordan is controlling the narrative. So I want to see... How far Jason Error was allowed to go uh, before Michael went, nope, because that's the control freak that is Michael Jordan. Jay, we got about two minutes left, and you mentioned a lot of the, the gambling, the, the murder of his dad, the, um, you know, so many of the other things. Was he, was he kicked out of the league, essentially, yeah, when he, uh, went, when to he went to baseball. play baseball for the gambling and stuff? Uh, do, how do you think 
it's a different era now with technology, more stuff leaks, you know, from teams and players and front offices than it used to. Um, the social media, the media climate in general, more of this stuff gets out and gets scrutinized. You didn't have the daily debate shows back then like you have now on TV and radio. How do you think things would have played out differently for Jordan in, you know, today? Like, with all this stuff going on, a lot, some of this, this stuff would have been more scrutinized than it was back then. If he was born in 1993, Rob, instead of 1963, these scandals he was involved in uh, would have been tenfold. Uh, Michael had the gambling scandal, of course, his father's murder. Uh, he had marital problems. He had affairs. Oh, my God. I mean, Jordan was involved in so many issues that would have been uh, just smothered today. He is very fortunate he didn't have to deal with that. And, and to answer your question earlier, I think you were talking about younger people. LeBron, I hear from so many millennials, oh, LeBron has surpassed Michael. I hope this documentary series proves to young people once and for all that not only did Jordan perfect the 666 sign of the devil, six appearances in the finals, six MVPs, six trophies, uh, but, but Michael Jordan made everybody around him better. Maybe he was a tyrant in the way he did it, as we're already seeing on here. I don't think LeBron James had those leadership skills. Some would say that Jordan went overboard. He was absolutely cruel to Jerry Krause, to some of these younger guys in the team, punching Steve Kerr. But Jordan got what he wanted in the end. I'm curious how younger people growing up in this generation feel about Michael really being the ultimate hard ass behind the scenes where he would actually slug Steve Kerr. And yet in the end, I'm going to come away with thinking this is the ultimate champion. Uh, did the uh, methods uh, end up uh, justifying what happened in the end? Six championships, whereas LeBron James has lost in the finals quite often and has not maximized all the talent around him. So, so much here. It's enjoyable right now. We're all looking for something to do. I'm glad they moved it up, and we all have something to talk about. No doubt, great Jay. Stuff, Jay. We will Thank get you. you on the show again, too, yes. man. Great Appreciate stuff. It. Keep Stay up well. the great work. Yes. Let's do it, guys. Stay safe. All right. Yep.